So this is the Britannia Hotel Manchester, one of the worst rated hotels in the city with reviews saying the place is horrendous, it's awful, the service is poor and you should avoid at all costs. But I have just booked a room in there for tonight because I want to see how bad this place actually is and what it's like inside. So let's go check in, I'll show you the room, give you a room tour and we'll go explore the inside of the hotel. So this is the main entrance of the hotel and it looks pretty fancy. The Britannia Hotel. You have these marble columns which are pretty solid. Let's head in. Check out that really cool chandelier. Right, let's head over and check in. Right, I'm all checked in, so let's go find the room. They did actually offer me the breakfast buffet for tomorrow, which I accepted, so we'll check that out tomorrow morning. But first, let's go find the room. So I'm in room 46 on the ground floor, which should be up here, which I'm a little bit disappointed about actually, because I wanted to go upstairs. So we'll have to do that after we check out the room. But let's go find my room first. I think it should be around here somewhere. That's a bit of a scary doorway. Is that? Should, do I want to go down there? Ah, the lights come on. Right, 46 in the corner. Let's see what this room is like. Oh, we have light. So this is my room. Let me give you a full tour. So as you walk in, you have the bed on the right and mine is just a single room. So we've got just a single bed. We've got a lamp, bedside lamp with a nice bedside table. And we've got a phone as well. Does that work? That phone doesn't actually work, so there's no point in that. What's in the drawers? Nothing in the drawers, but a nice old style bedside table. On the other side, we've got, got the TV. We've got a chair, a little table with the remote on there. I've got a hairdryer in a nice fancy little holder. Usually these are in the drawers. Got another lamp as well, which actually matches the one on the bedside table, which is not always the case. Got a little table here. Nothing in the drawer, but we have our tea and coffee making facilities. We've got the cup. Milk, sugar, tea bags, coffee, and we've got the kettle. Let's see what the inside of this is like. Pretty clean actually. Nice little kettle. Then we've got the mirror over there. And then to the left we have two great big full length mirrors. Which opens up into the wardrobe. Got an old fashion style trouser press. Don't know if anybody still uses those. In fact, I don't think I've ever used one of those. Got some coat hangers, and up there is a spare blanket, it looks like. And then on this side, we have just some little shelves. Moving on into the bathroom, it's a pretty simple one, we've got the mirror, we've got a sink, we've got a bin right there, the toilet, some towels on this side, and then 
the shower and bath. I've never actually seen one of these shower heads before, sticking out of the wall and then with the control here. Let's have a closer look at the bath and see how clean it is. It looks pretty clean actually. Let's move on out and check out the view because I do have a window in this room and the view is of the road and building opposite. I mean the window area is pretty shoddy, I mean if you have a look it's kind of falling apart a bit but the strange thing is there's the actual window that goes to the outside and this opens up and it's the actual outside right there which you can close and then you would think you can close this part of the window but you can't there's only just one side here and then there's nothing here I think there should be one here but it's missing and I think I can already see a problem here because just standing here I can hear all the traffic from the outside so all the buses going past people walking the cars I think it's going to be a pretty noisy night I've also noticed that there's a really big draft coming in from these windows so I don't know how cold it's going to get but it is really warm right now because the radiators seem like they're on full but I don't know if you can hear that from the outside the traffic it's really loud So first impressions of the room, it doesn't seem that bad. I mean, there are the odd stains, let's say, on the curtains right there. And then you have some marks on the wall as well. But it doesn't seem that bad. The only problem that I can see so far is how loud the traffic is on the outside these windows are not double glazed and you can hear everything driving past oh there's a picture on the wall what is that of I can't really read what that says but you do get a picture in this room let's do the bed inspection let's see how clean this is and how springy or soft it is as well that's not a good sign. I can already spot a hair on the pillow. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. That's not good. That doesn't bode well for the rest of the bed, but let's have a closer look. I think the bed seems fine. It's just the pillow that's got that hair on it. We have some folded toilet paper, pretty fancy, but this toilet paper is the really thin, cheap stuff. I'm just admiring these taps, look how fancy and cool they are. I've never seen taps like them. Check that out. I'm just looking around the room and there's no actual light on the ceiling so usually you would have some sort of lighting on the ceiling but in this room there isn't the only lighting is the two lamps the one there and the one over there which is a bit strange why would a room not have any lighting on the ceiling I think this chair has seen better days. I don't know when that's from, but it looks pretty old. 
So I paid £37 for this room. Do you think that's worth it or not? Comment down below. So from first impressions, I think it's an okay decent room. I mean there's little marks on the walls and scuffs and the odd hair in the bed. But I think apart from that, it's okay. I think I mentioned the main problem quite a few times and that's the window. It's really thin, I don't think it's double glazed and you can hear every single vehicle going past whether that's a bus, a taxi, a car or even people talking as well. So it's going to be a pretty loud night, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to sleep. Right, I think it's time to check out the rest of the hotel. Back into the scary doorway. We have light again. Right, let's go back to the entrance because the chandelier there was incredible. And the entrance was amazing. And when you look up from that chandelier, you can see all the way to the top of the hotel. Just coming back to this area that I came past before, and you've got like a hall of mirrors. Check that out, there's me there, and also there, and there. And we've got the same mirrors on this side as well. But we have a cool fancy lamp. Quite solid actually. Let's move on. We've got this little, is this like a bar area? We have a pool table here and then this bar that's closed right now. These, what I thought were paintings, are not actually paintings. This is fabric. How cool is that? So these are fabric paintings, fabric canvases. Don't know how you would describe that. But they're really nice. So breakfast is served in Jenny's restaurant downstairs, which is down there. And I'll be checking that out tomorrow morning. So this is where you have the lifts. And it looks like there's a luggage area where you can store your luggage as well. I don't think I've seen one of these in a cheap hotel like this before. The only places I've seen them are at big fancy ones. I think they even have a functioning post box in here. Have a look at that, post box collection, Monday to Friday at 4.30. So you can post your letters whilst you stay in this hotel. But this is the main entrance when you're walking and that chandelier is so impressive. Must be hundreds of lights on there. And I'm guessing it's probably going to be really old too, maybe even a hundred years old, maybe more. And if you look up, you can see all the way to the top of the hotel. I think I want to get a view from the top all the way to the bottom. Let's take the lift and go to the top. And we've reached the fifth floor. And the decor is pretty much the same here as it is down there. So I think this here is, is this for the chandelier? It is, and let me tell you, that is a really scary view looking straight down to the bottom from here. If you're not if you're not a fan of heights, don't look down. We've got a great big random wardrobe just at the end over here. Is there anything inside this? I think they're locked. Oh no, they're not. And we have a Carlsberg glass. Anything in the drawers? No, I think those are actually locked. 
Let's have a walk around and see if there's anything else. So it looks like just rooms. Usually in old hotels like this, there's big conference rooms, events rooms. Let's go see if we can find some of those. But let's walk down this cool little staircase first. This is really impressive. And it goes down both sides. I think this has to be one of the most impressive network of staircases and stairs I've ever seen in a hotel. And the entrance as well with the chandelier, one of the best and most impressive I've ever seen. To think that this is just a cheap hotel, the inside is really, really nice. I know I'm going on about these stairs, but the way they're designed is really impressive. And to think this building is over a hundred years old, so these would have been designed and made over a hundred years ago. It's incredible. The carpets do look a little bit filthy when you get close up. So I think they could do with a little bit of a clean and a vacuum. Okay, so in terms of how good or bad the hotel is, it is pretty old fashioned. So a lot of the fixtures and fittings, they're pretty old and some are falling apart, but it's not actually that bad. Although this bit, maybe not. There is a lot of mismatched carpets in here. We've got the blue one on this side, coming onto this black and gold one. And then we've got the red one over there. So I think some of these have been replaced. But this leads onto another sketchy, spooky doorway. Let's not go down there. I can't seem to find any interesting conference or events rooms in this hotel. I'm not sure if it has them or not. So I'll see you tomorrow for the breakfast buffet. Good morning, it's now day two of the Britannia Hotel stay and it's time for breakfast. So this is the breakfast buffet. They were playing pretty loud music in there, so I can't use the sound for this, but I'll describe what it's like. So I was the first person there, so it was pretty empty, but the selection of food you can see here is not the biggest. You have your usual items like your sausage, egg, beans, bacon, toast, and some cereals. You have some sweet things as well, and some teas and coffees and juices. So I decided to go with the orange juice first, and then I had an apple juice. And then I had a cup of tea as well. The plates that you get for the breakfast were pretty small, but I later found out that they are bigger plates, but they're in another place. So I went for the sausage, which looked pretty decent in the tray. And then I had bacon, we had mushrooms, had beans, a tomato, and a nice egg as well. And then this sort of bread thing, which I'm not too sure what it was, but I think it was some sort of potato bread. The juices were quite mild in flavour. The orange juice seemed a bit watered down, so I preferred the apple juice more. And the tea was an Earl Grey tea, so that was pretty lovely. The sausage seemed to be a typical breakfast sausage that you would see at any other place. So it did taste a little bit bland. The bacon was quite meaty in texture, a little bit salty as well. And again, your typical breakfast bacon that you would see at any other place really. And the egg again was your typical breakfast egg that you would see anywhere else. The bread that I got on the side was actually a potato-y type bread. I'm not sure what the actual name for it was, but it was pretty tasty. And the best thing about a full English breakfast is you can mix and match the items like I did here. Now the breakfast cost £9.95, so was it worth it? I'm not too sure. I think it's probably similar to any other place that you would get, but it is all you can eat here. 
so probably worth it in the end. Although I do have to say it was slightly on the blander side of taste. Okay, so breakfast all done. So what are my final thoughts on staying here at the Britannia Hotel in Manchester? Well, I would say it was pretty okay, I suppose. Not as bad as the reviews suggest. Let's start off with the room. So it was pretty good actually, not as bad as I was expecting. So the bed was nice and comfy. The room was actually, I thought, relatively clean. I mean, there are a few marks and stains and scratches and things on the walls and the odd hair in the bed. But overall, I think pretty decent. And it looks like it's got a new carpet as well. So the only negative that I would have is the windows. So, so much noise comes in from these. At night time, it's quite hard to sleep. And especially with this room where you're right next to the main road. I mean, you can hear every single vehicle that drives past. So the buses, the vans, the trucks, the cars, and even people walking past and talking, you can hear pretty clearly through these windows. It's like standing down below on the street. I think if they had the second set of windows fully intact, it might have held out the sound a little bit more. But as it is now, I had a pretty broken night's sleep with waking up every now and again with the sound of the traffic. The hotel itself though, especially the entrance with that massive chandelier and staircase, was really really impressive. So one of the best hotels that I've actually seen from the entrance. And to think that the hotel is over a hundred years old. I'm not sure if the actual fittings and the staircase and chandeliers are over a hundred years old. But I think they're pretty old nevertheless. So to still be standing and in that shape today, I think is incredible. The breakfast was okay. Not the biggest selection out there. So I think maybe it's better worth going out to a cafe or a bar to have breakfast instead. So overall for £37 a night in this room in the centre of Manchester. I think it's pretty worth it. Okay, so if you like the video, click on the thumbs up icon below, click on subscribe to come along for the next journey, and I'll see you in the next video.